Welcome to episode 18 of the Life in Norway show. My guest today is Bobby Madley, a former Premier League referee from England who three weeks ago moved to Oslo and has aspirations to make it as a referee at the highest level of Norwegian football. We talk a little bit about football on the show, but the main focus is Bobby's first impressions of life in Oslo and of the Norwegian lifestyle. That's because I get a lot of questions on life in Norway about uh, what to expect when someone first moves to Norway. Problem is, my first impression of the country dates back to 2011, and things have changed since then. So I find Bobby's perspective on his first weeks in Norway really refreshing, and I'm sure you will enjoy it just as much as I did. You can find out more about Bobby's story and everything we speak about on the show today on the show notes page at lifeinnorway.net forward slash podcast. Happy listening. I'd like to welcome Bobby Madley to the Life in Norway show. Bobby is a former Premier League referee from England who is now living in Oslo and looking to become a referee here in the Norwegian League. Bobby, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Thanks for having me. No problem. And now this is a really fascinating story and I can't wait as a football fan to hear more about your experiences uh, moving over here to Norway. But let's start with uh, the basics. Uh, how long have you been here and what brought you to Norway in the first place? Yeah, so I've been here for about three weeks now, um, just over three weeks uh, on a permanent basis. Obviously, I've been here many times before. Um, basically, my uh, my girlfriend, my partner's Norwegian. She's from Oslo. Um, she works as a nurse here. And so people tell me Norwegian people are very happy to be in Norway. So it seems to be that everybody who finds a Norwegian partner uh, ends up having to move rather than then move to their country. So here I am in Norway. Is there any particular reason why you chose uh, to live in, in Norway rather than live in the UK? Well, I mean, as I said, she's, she's a nurse and she's settled over here in a job um, very close to her family. I and mean, I'm, I'm incredibly close to my family. But basically, as a football referee, football is football anywhere in the world. So I think it's easier in terms of that profession to to be able to change and, and whatever country that is. Yeah. Sure. We will talk about football. I'm especially interested in the differences between uh, how you experience the game in England and in Norway. But first of all, I don't have many guests on the show that are so new to living in <laughs> Norway. So I'm really interested to hear about your first impressions of Oslo. Now, my first impressions of Oslo go back seven years. So things things are different now. It's a, it's a different city. It's a much bigger city. There's more things to do, more things open. So as a newcomer to Norway, brand new, three weeks in the country, yeah. what's your impression of Oslo? I love it. I love Oslo. I think, I mean, I, I come from the north of England anyway. So the city I'm most close to, I lived most close to in England was Leeds. Um, and Oslo reminds me a little bit of Leeds in that it's a large city, but it's not got that same hustle and bustle and pace that London and maybe some of the southern cities have. Um, and I love the fact that you're so close to the countryside here as well, so close to some incredible scenery, which again, Yorkshire I'm from, so not too far out of Leeds, I've got the Yorkshire Dales. So it, it kind of feels like home in that sense. Um, nobody seems to be, <clears throat> excuse me, nobody seems to be rushing everywhere to, um, and panicking to get to work or you know elbowing past you on the the tea barn and it's just a really nice uh, nice environment to be in um so so far we've been to the opera house to see some ballet and it's just a really nice cultured city so first impressions are superb yeah Norwegian lifestyle more generally I guess you have a Norwegian girlfriend so you've probably been introduced to the lifestyle gradually uh, but now you're living in the Norwegian capital what's your opinion of of the lifestyle and the differences from the UK I mean basically I, I was surprised actually because I mean in London everybody seems to be very sort of involved in their own lives in terms of they have somewhere to go and nobody seems to talk um, I find it very similar I think that's why it's been quite easy for me to adapt coming from close to a city like Leeds um, people are very friendly. The, the one difference is that when you when you go out and you say hello to people, they, they seem a little bit surprised that <laughs> that you've just taken the time to say hello. 
went running around the lake and said hello while I was running and got a few surprised faces back. Um, but just the whole culture of the place. I mean, other than the prices being slightly different to uh, to what I'm used to in the UK, um, I love the culture of the place. I really do. I just think it's a really warm in the city, not temperature wise right now, obviously. Um, but I just think it's somewhere that I feel I could I could very easily settle. The first time I came, obviously I was, I was very fortunate refereeing to travel to a lot of European cities to do games. The first time I came to Oslo, I went back and spoke to family and friends and, and I said, you know what, of all the places I've been, Oslo feels like somewhere that I could make home, even before I had any plans to move here, um, which probably says a lot. So the, the very first impressions of it was, yeah, I, I feel quite at home here already. Okay. Something I hear from a lot of Brits uh, that are new to Norway is that they, they sort of bemoan the lack of pub culture uh, that we have <laughs> back in back in the UK. I've no idea if you're you know, a regular pub goer in England, but is, is that something that you miss here in Norway? Um, I, I wasn't, to be fair. I wasn't, mm. I wasn't huge on that, obviously, because of the job. I didn't spend too much time drinking. But we have been up into, into Oslo, and there was a few English and Scottish bars on Carl Johans, and couple of decent Irish bars in the, the city as well. So I don't think that it's a, a huge culture thing for me to not have, you know, I, I was never really like from a village, so I've never had that village local pub. Um, but no, I, I don't think so. And I know the culture here is more that people drink at home and then go out about midnight on a weekend, which again is slightly different to, uh, to England. I think at my age now, I think I'm usually coming home at about midnight if that was the case. So, yeah, so I mean, culturally, in terms of that, it's not a huge difference. Um, but I certainly haven't found any. So we found a nice English bar to watch some Premier League in the other day, which was quite good. So yeah, it's not. I don't. I haven't seen that as a big negative for me. Well, something else that is quite different from the UK, I think it's fair to say, is football and football culture, particularly. Yeah. Um, did you have much experience of watching or maybe even refereeing uh, any Norwegian football before you you moved over here? Um, not so much watching before I moved here. I mean, I had watched, obviously, because I was here, I had watched um, some elite Syrian games on the TV with my partner's dad. Um, I have actually done a game in, I don't know, a European Cup game in uh, in Trondheim in Rosenborg a few years ago against Lazio in December, which was um, a shock to the uh, <laughs> shock to the system to be in Norway in December. But I, since I've been here, and since obviously since I've known that I was coming. I watched quite a lot of the second half of the uh, the Norwegian leagues. So I've seen a lot of the games. The atmospheres look, at some particular games, Lillestrøm and Vollerenga, for instance, the atmosphere there looks superb. I'm told over here that the standard of football in Norway, and people keep comparing it to the Premier League, I think that's unfair. The games I've watched have been really entertaining. So I'm, I'm looking forward to being involved in football over here. I think it's very exciting. It's funny you pick out uh, Volleringer Lillestrøm. Volleringer is actually, despite living in Trondheim, that's my Norwegian team as I yeah. uh, I spent a few years in Oslo before moving up here. Um, yeah. I, I suppose as a, as a wannabe referee here in Norway, you, you probably won't have an allegiance to any any Norwegian club. How about back in, in Britain? Do you do you have a team? I mean, that's, that's a good question, actually. Uh, are referees allowed to to support a club? Yeah, of course. They are. I mean, all referees get involved in refereeing because they're football fans and they've grown up loving football. So we all have a football team. Um, I'm a Huddersfield Town fan. So, I mean, obviously, I've spent 30 years watching them suffering and down in the doldrums. And then all of a sudden, the last few years have been in the Premier League. So, yeah, we all have a team. Um, I think the, the newspapers in England made a big point a couple of years ago of um, of actually printing the teams that we support. Not completely accurate, but pretty much so. And you'd be surprised because actually nearly every one of the referees supports a team that's outside of the Premier League, certainly the Premier League refs. Mm. Um, so there's no issue in that. I mean, obviously we have honesty, we have integrity as refs, but would I be allowed to referee a Huddersfield game? No, of course I wouldn't. That's not because... I would do anything that would influence the game. I've no interest in that. But the repercussions, I'm sure everyone would be aware of me awarding a penalty kick to Huddersfield in the, in the, the 90th minute, right or wrong, there'd be accusations of, of not being honest there. So it, we don't want to put referees in that position. 
Mm. But yeah, of course, we all we all support football teams. Even Northampton Town, I think, are supported by a few of them. So <laughs> there are a few outlying uh, Northampton Town fans yeah. here in Norway. At least <laughs> one, anyway, Bobby. I, I don't yeah. know about a few, but uh, if there are any fellow Northampton Town fans out there, do please get in touch. It would be pretty incredible if uh, if there was a group of us. But uh, <laughs> anyway, um, so so refereeing. Uh, obviously, it's a it's a full time profession at the highest level in england yeah. is that right yeah okay and top two leagues yeah mm. not necessarily the same uh, over here in norway but uh, as i understand it at least from reading the the papers uh, a, a career in refereeing over here in norway is something you're you're really interested in so could you tell us a bit about your your hopes in in that area yeah definitely I mean, i've had meetings with the uh, the nff already so the norwegian fa and I, I think to be fair to them i think they've managed and dealt with from my perspective they dealt with this perfectly they have a top group of referees now referees exactly the same as in england the norwegian referees start out at the lower levels and they work through experience and through hard work and commitment to get to the top now it's okay i think a premier league player coming to play in the norwegian top flight would would move straight into the top division that that would probably be expected refereeing is different and I don't think it's right that I should be arrogant enough or have the expectation that oh, well, I refereed in England and therefore that means I can referee in the top league in any in sorry the top league in any country. So I don't have that expectation. If that's where the NFF want to put me, then fantastic. If they want me to start in the second, third, fourth divisions, that's their prerogative to do that. I love refereeing football. As you say, it's not a full time career in Norway, which makes that a little. A little easier in terms of um, in terms of just getting another job now and knowing where I stand on that. Um, so basically, I'm just really looking forward to getting back on the pitch, whatever league that is in. How will the language issue affect refereeing here in Norway? I, I assume you're you're almost certainly learning Norwegian, but yeah. I can't imagine you're fluent yet after only a couple of weeks living in the country. So, are you allowed to referee a game in English? I have started learning Norwegian. I've been learning Norwegian for about just over six months now, actually, with online apps and my partner refusing at times just to speak English, just to make me speak Norwegian, which has been fantastic. Um, I mean, I, I refereed on the international list in England, so I refereed Europa League, Champions League and international games all over the world, really. Um, so there's quite an international language in terms of football, whether that be body language, facial expression, signals clearly are the same in every country for whatever referees awarding but the majority of the world speak english that's not me being arrogant most people understand the key phrases of of english and certainly in norway I mean, most people's english is better than mine actually so i'm sure i'll get pulled up i don't think it'll be an issue what i want to be able to do is to referee games and speak in norwegian um but there'll also be times when i will speak in english even when I refereed in the Premier League, my French is, is quite good. Mm. I would communicate to French players in the Premier League in French, um, certainly ones who didn't speak English too well. So if I can do that and build up a base of languages to be able to speak to players, then you know, that's got to be a positive thing. But yeah, I am learning. Um, it's coming on. It's getting there. So we'll see. Any tips for anyone learning Norwegian? Like, what, what are the biggest barriers or the, the biggest difficulties in, in learning the language that you've come across so far? I think I think it's more pronunciation than anything because there's certain, I mean, obviously there's I think 29 letters in the Norwegian alphabet rather than 26. And there's certain words that we just don't form in English with our mouths. So trying to get the correct sounds. And even though I think I'm making the same sounds as, as Jenny will make, and it sounds exactly the same to me, she'll still look and be like, no, it doesn't quite sound right. So I think that's the hardest thing. I, I mean, a lot of people have said that Norwegian is a really difficult language to learn. I'll be honest, I, I haven't found that it's an impossible language by any stretch to learn. The hardest thing about being here and being English is that everybody enjoys speaking English. So even though you want to speak Norwegian and learn Norwegian, most of the time people are just like, it's fine, we, we speak English. So that's why it's good at home to have someone who is Norwegian that will just refuse to do it. Not because she's being, she's not being funny with me. She's just because she knows it benefits me. I can imagine that being the case on the football pitch as well. If, uh, you know, a high pressure intensity game, you're, you're looking to book a Norwegian star player. They're likely to just turn around and, and probably swear at you in English rather than in Norwegian because they know probably. you're English, right? 
I've learned, I've learned the Norwegian swear words as well, just in case. But I think that's the same for any language, you know, that you usually learn the swear words first and work from that. Yeah, it's, it's one of the more fun things about learning a language. Yeah. Let's, let's not pretend. But I imagine for a referee, it's especially important to know uh, what's yeah. being said yeah. to you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, uh, Bobby, is there anything you wish you'd known uh, before you moved to Oslo? Well, I've got, I've got a few friends coming actually this week, so I, I've not quite told them the price of a beer yet. So that <laughs> might come as a surprise to them. Do you know what? I, I don't think so. The, the difficulty for for me at the moment is more. I think the process moving to England seems to be quite easy. That people move. You're from the EU or an EEC country. You get a national insurance number. You can work, and it, it seems to be as simple as that. Norway seems to be a little bit more difficult than that at the moment in terms of I've been to like the, the tax office a few times. Um, they want to get a D number, for instance, to work. It, it seems to be a slightly longer process than than what it would be in England, which has been a little bit frustrating. Um, basically, it was almost you register with the police, you then get sent down to get a D number. I went down to the desk to get a D number, and it said, well, do you have a written job offer? So well, I don't have a written one at the moment. Well, I can't give you a D number. But then you can't really get a job without a D number. So it, it, that seems to be a little bit going around in circles. Um, but other than that, and luckily I've had someone here who's Norwegian who's, who's helped me through that process as well. I think that would probably be the hardest thing for people moving here at the moment. Um, obviously, they, they're a highly, highly educated country. A lot of the younger guys here have got bachelors, a lot of them master's degrees. So the competition for jobs, for every job really, seems to be really, really high. Um, so what I would say is for a, a potentially for an unskilled person as such coming from England, that might be found a little bit difficult. It could be difficult to, you wouldn't, I don't think there's, there's the opportunities that there is in England that you just come in and just walk straight into a job, which is a great sign for the country and for the economy over here. Um, but I, I think people are naive if they're going to come to Norway and just expect that they walk in and, and get a job straight away, especially without knowing any Norwegian or even a little Norwegian. The most important thing is you have to learn the language as quickly as possible. Wise words, Bobby, I think it's fair to say. Before we move on to the uh, the last questions that I that I ask all uh, guests on the show, the, the football season in Norway is, uh, like in Sweden, is a summer uh, season. Mm. Um, now, obviously, everyone's watching the Premier League and the Champions League right now. Everyone's football crazy. But well, there won't be any football in, in Norway for the next uh, four months or so. So uh, what's the plan for the, the coming months? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, firstly, in, in terms of football, keep myself fit. That's that's the strangest thing. It's the first Christmas I've had off in well, years, 15 years, mm. I think. So it'll be quite strange to have Christmas with no football, not actually being involved in football. Um, but I have to hit the season running. I've got to hit the ground running, which means training now. Obviously, when it comes to January and it's minus 15 degrees outside, that's that becomes more of a challenge than it is in England. Um, I mean, in terms of away from football, I do a lot of speaking and, and public speaking, keynote speaking in England. Um, and again, it's just about building that reputation to do the same in Norway. So I have signed with an agency over here to do that. Um, and basically, that talk just is about uh, using refereeing. You don't have to be interested in football to listen to it. Um, it's just about taking the key principles of refereeing, of management of people, decision making, working under pressure, and put, turning them around to work in terms of a business uh, model. How can you look at a slightly different perspective from football and use that in your own business? So that's something that I'm working with. I'm also doing a little bit of work with the uh, Oslo Top Sport University as well. Um, so I'm going to be working with some of their students on the psychology of management and, again, of pressure even working in exam environments, taking that from a lead from refereeing perspectives and putting that into their own um, their own lives as well. So there's lots to be doing, lots that I'm that I'm getting on with at the moment over here, um, and it's quite exciting to to start again. Really, it sounds quite strange, but I think sometimes when you become in your own little bubble and you get cocooned in your own little life, it's nice sometimes to step outside that comfort zone and say, right, okay, this is back to the real world a little bit. Um, and let's let's challenge yourself again. In terms of keeping fit, uh, I think it's fair to say one of the best ways that Norwegians keep themselves fit is cross country skiing. Now, yeah. me personally, learning as a as a thirty something, 
I yeah. re- have really struggled to to pick it up. Uh, I personally think it's something you really need to get going with at a, a young age. Have you yeah. tried cross country skiing yet? Yeah, I mean, it was part of the contract actually. Of Premier League referees are not allowed to ski um, because of the really, dangers. yeah, because of the the injury danger in it is high, especially if you haven't skied before. Um, that you weren't allowed to do that in in season anyway. I mean, how you do that out of season in August? I don't know where you would go to do that, but. So, I, but I have tried. I've tried it now. Um, I went to Yilo. Mm-hmm. It's freezing cold there because Jenny has their family has a. We went heat to tour apparently to uh, to Yilo. So I tried cross country skiing first. I didn't realise the skis were as thin as that actually, which surprised me a little bit. So I spent probably the first fifteen minutes on my backside, <laughs> um, and then couldn't get up. So and she wouldn't help either. So that was frustrating. I think the hardest thing with skiing for me is that I, I feel like I can turn my hand to most sports and and be reasonably good at most sports. So skiing, I kind of expected I would be good at. I can ice skate, so I thought it can't be much different. And it really was. It really was. The the cross-country skiing I got used to in the end, um, so I, that was okay. Tried slalom the next day. And, I mean, stand, it was only the, the kids' slope. I stood at the top of the kids' slope looking down, and I've never been as terrified in my life. It was like looking down a sheer face, which clearly it wasn't. Um, I knew I would get to the bottom, but I really think it's something I could I could start to enjoy and get into. Like you said, that fitness-wise for cross-country, I think it's, they've said in, in all sports, it's the best cardio workout that you can do. So that's definitely something that I'll be, uh, that I'll be trying to take up over here as well. Interesting. I just have to ask again, uh, are there any other sports or activities that referees in the Premier League are, are not allowed to do? Um, I think it's just the like the main ones, obviously the extreme sports that mm. you're not supposed to do, whether that be parachuting or paragliding. Or um, I think it's just more the extreme ones. So the ones that have got a high risk of, of danger, even cricket to an extent, um, as much as that's not a written law, I think that's just understood that I played cricket in England, but I always played outside of football season. So I would have to start late and I would have to finish early in, because of the, the seasons overlapping. Again, just because of risk of injury. A broken finger or taking a ball in the you know, in the cheekbone probably wouldn't look great on uh, on Sky Sports one on the on day one of the season with a big black eye I and mean, it probably doesn't give the best impression of, uh, of what kind of summer you've had. So yeah, so there, there are a few things like that that you've got to be uh, got to be professional with. But yeah, I mean, it's uh, as long as you're sensible, then I'm sure it's uh, I'm sure you can manage most of them. Good stuff. Okay, Bobby, uh, I have three questions for you. Uh, quick answers, please. What's the best thing about living in Norway? Um, the clean air, the clean area, and just the, the as much as it's very cold, it feels just very sort of organic and healthy. Totally understand what you're saying. Yep. The worst thing, or perhaps the most challenging thing about living in Norway? Getting used to the prices, and, and I think the the worst thing you can do if you move here is to keep converting things back into pounds because that that just messes with your head all the time. And you just have to understand that the wages here are higher; it's all relative. Um, you can smile a bit more, I suppose, when you go back to England for a holiday because you might have a bit more in your pocket. But you, you cannot convert things to to pounds. That's the hardest thing over here at the moment. That is a really really good tip, and it's one that took me almost a year to learn. So yeah. uh, that you've learned that after three weeks is a really yeah. good sign, I yeah. think. But you see, that's that's it. We're, we're good with money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the last question then: your favourite place in Norway, whether that's a, a very specific spot or or just a, a town or a city. That's a great question. I, I love Oslo, um, but I've always loved being a Yorkshireman. I've always loved the countryside. So. That drive to Yilo is um, is something quite special. The the town itself, just everything about that area. I'm actually really excited about travelling to places like Tromsø. Jenny's sister is working currently as a teacher in Svalbard, so that's going to be very interesting to go there. Obviously, to to experience 24 hours of dark um, will be something different. So, as much as I've been to some beautiful places at the moment, um, I, I still think there's a lot more beautiful places to like Hardanger and Gairanger. They're, they're places that I can't wait to see. You've seen photographs of them. Um, it's just really exciting to to see the, the stunning places this country has to offer. Yeah, uh, one of the benefits about being a writer and having written a guidebook to Norway is I've I've seen a lot of those places you've just yeah. mentioned, and you know you, you have a lot of 
really memorable uh, adventures to look forward to. One of the places I've not yet been, which is on my agenda for the new year, is going to Svalbard. And I am ridiculously excited about that trip. It's it's really the last thing on my bucket list that I really want to see in Norway. So, um, yeah, maybe I'll be asking uh, you and uh, your family for some tips on uh, on that trip. No problem. (laughs) No problem at all. Okay, Bobby, I think it's it's been really interesting chatting to you. Thanks so much for spending some time. Um, you seem to have a really nice grip on life in Oslo after only just a couple of weeks. And <laughs> I wish you all the best, perhaps when you're a popular referee, refereeing in the in the Premier League in Norway, or come back on the show and let us know how you're getting on. Absolutely. Yeah, I'd love to. Thanks for having us. It's been great.